we're going to start with today's uh, presentation on resistance, war, creativity, and memory. Today, we have all the authors of this publication. We have Dana Paniglov, she's an historian and the teacher of history. She has prepared the part that is related to history. Kristina Dilica, she is the teacher of Croatian language in elementary school, and uh, she's uh, doing her PhD studies in Osijek. And uh, we have Alicia Straniero. She has uh, uh, worked on the graphic setup of the publication. And today we have also Alexander Hanegar, who is the head of the political and economical department of the US Embassy here in Zagreb. Thank you very much for joining us. I'd like to thank all of you that are following us as well. We, you have interpreting available. Uh, you can find that below on the screen where it says interpreting, and then you can choose between English and Russian. Well, since there's no a Croatian option, then we'll just use Russian instead of Croatian. So basically, if you click on Russian, the Croatian will follow. And uh, we will record this session in both languages because we hope that this, uh, those guidelines after this conversation today is going to be used by the ones that are interested, although the entire publication is not translated to English. And I hope that we'll be able to do that in the future. But uh, we can have two versions now and and Milan Zharkovic is helping us to record the English one as well. So we had decided to present this, this, this guidebook today because it's the uh, eighth anniversary of the attack of Nazi and fascistic forces on the Kingdom of Yugoslavia at that time. And today's uh, guidebook is some sort of a modest attempt to confront revisionism that we have wit witnessed for the last 30 years. And I would say that this is the best tool against misinformation and on everything that has happened during World War II. So basically spreading correct information and doing the proper researches. And I hope that this uh, will make it easier. And uh, we have organized, we have prepared one walk at the end of, of March, and we also prepare another one for this month. And uh, I would uh, try to, I would like to introduce another date that's 19th of june because all of the dates of all the places during the pandemics for 10th of uh, april and uh, may are full felt both walks will be translated to english uh, so anyone that is interested can follow them and uh, i would like to contact uh, i would like to ask you to contact tanya Tena Baniglov. The World War II has been marked by Holocaust, the genocide against Serbs, the genocide against Romas, and the killing of Croats and the other anti-fascists uh, that the Ostash regime of the independent state of Croatia has been, uh, have been labeled as animus. I would not like to take much further, but I would like to ask uh, my colleague Tena Baniglov to present virtually this online guidelines or guidebook. Thank you very much, Vesna, and thank you so much for joining us. I hope that today the uh, guidebook would be interesting and useful to you. I would like to put down my email address as well. And for the ones that are interested in the future walks, uh, I hope that uh, you can contact me. There we go. So as Vesna said already, the guidebook is exists in an online format. And I hope, or we hope, that the next edition will be printed and translated in English, that it can be used by all the visitors and all the, the ones that are interested. 
the guidebook has been produced uh, based on the wishes of Documenta to fight the revisionism, but in some way also to give some sort of a tool to the youngsters that do not know much, but also to the teachers of history and the others that work with the youngsters that can use uh, this guidebook in their teaching, but also in many other various situations when they deal with those matters. And I hope that this book will be used and it's going to be useful. And right now I would like to use this opportunity to call all the teachers and the others that when they use the guidebook and any other sort of material that we're going to present today to give us some feedback, to contact us so we can uh, perhaps improve something, we can we can add something, we can avoid something that might be superficial or might not be, uh, might not have enough content. So now I'm gonna share my screen so that you can see the material and perhaps you can follow it in a better way. So this, it exists in um, Documenta's web pages in the uh, publications files. And of course, I'd like to thank all the colleagues that have worked here. You can see here on the names of the people that have worked in the document. And uh, of course, we'd like to thank the US Embassy in Zagreb that has supported uh, financially the publication of the guidebook. So after the introduction, we have uh, the term uh, section. We wanted to put it in the beginning so that the youngsters, before they go into the contact of the content of the text, they might become familiar with some of the terms that they are not familiar with, and then they can have it easier to read the guide. So in this uh, term section, we can find some of the explanations of, of, of the terminology used back then, but also today. And uh, we've had lots of conversations on those matters, uh, especially about the terms that are related to the anti-fascist struggle, illegal movements and so on. So what are the correct terms on some of those uh, events and some of those elements? So on the other hand, we used uh, the space to, to go to, to talk about some of the other uh, places. For instance, uh, we explained the system of the camps that has been mentioned so many many times including Yasunovets and many others and then we followed on with a historical introduction and I have a couple of chapters the first one talks about the conditions in the kingdom of Yugoslavia just before the world war ii and uh, there is uh, of course lots of details um, on, on this phase and then we have uh, the introduction of the period of the establishment of the independent state of Croatia, how the authorities were established at the time, how they functioned, and so on and so forth. Then we looked very specifically into Zagreb, how Zagreb looked in the independent state of Croatia, which became the capital city of the independent state of Croatia. And it was some sort of a city that was supposed to prove as an example of uh, deputations and uh, all the racial laws that were implemented here. And uh, so they wanted to test all of the, this in Zagreb and then uh, implement it further into other parts of the country. And uh, here they were Ustashe, they were Nazis, uh, they were Italian fascists and others. Then uh, we have a chapter that talks about the uh, forced resettlement uh, of the Serbs from Zagreb and the, the other parts of NDH. Then we're talking about the deportation of uh, Jews from Zagreb and the Romans in the next chapter. And uh, well, that is a part that is very weakly documented. So we wanted to expand the story a bit further in the whole of the independent state of Croatia. So that is the part that deals with NDH. The rest deals uh, with the resistance of the people of Zagreb that resisted to the terror. So there was an illegal uh, movement and we talked about how it uh, strengthened, how it grew during the time. And uh, then uh, we spoke, of course, about the entire uh, organizing of the 
so-called people's freedom movement and the entire areas, not only Croatia, but mainly Croatia and Zagreb. Then we spoke about the baselines of the state the serenity and, uh, uh, well, something that resulted with Yugoslavia. And we finish up with the chapter that relates to the victory and dealing with the animus, as was called in 1945 when Zagreb was liberated. And then we continue on with the locations, describing those locations. So we have divided them through thematic subjects. Uh, first of all, uh, we talk about the Ustashe prisons. Uh, well, on the ones that we've had most of the data and witnesses and testimonies and materials that we can include. Of course, I hope that this content can be expanded in the next edition. Uh, so we have the Ustasha prisons here, and uh, well, there are a couple of uh, prisons that existed in the city. You can see the names of them here. Then uh, the camps and the deportation sites um, in Zagreb, uh, Karetstinets, the western train station, the main train station, and uh, the areas from where the people were sent to the forced labor than the mass shootings and killings of the people, institutions of the occupation of towers in Zagreb, locations of the larger actions of resistance, and of course, the description of other illegal activities. Uh, the the uh, areas where children that were saved from the camps uh, were, were, were given refuge, the story of Diana Bodisavljevich, then the building of the Jewish community and uh, the uh, home for the elderly people, Lavoslav Schwarz and the others. Then we spoke about mass graves, Mirogoy. And then we have the uh, mass graves from World War II, uh, children from Kozara and the others. And uh, of course, we spoke in details about many other mass graves. And there were many, unfortunately. And then we also spoke about the locations of repression and memory. Uh, we spoke about uh, the monuments to, uh, that have been really like erected to anti fascism and that exist a lot. That's why they named it in such a way. Then we had other um, locations that we couldn't actually fit in the other contacts previously. So we kind of ended up with them at the end. And uh, then the part that deals uh, deals with the various people that created and wrote and acted in various ways and had to do with Zagreb. And the rest, last chapter is the uh, part of uh, bibliography that talks about many units and many individuals and many people. And I believe that this can be a baseline for some further research or expanding this existing research. So now we're going to go a little bit through the guidebook, just simply I want to show it to you. And I'd like to, to present one given location so you can see how those things function. And uh, so this includes many, many various examples. So I'd like to scroll quickly here below. So I'd like to make it quicker. One thing that I wanted to mention, and I didn't, and uh, during this entire text, we used lots of quotes from the witnesses of time. And here in the text, we'd like to mention, we've mentioned the names and under every single chapter and its title, we considered that we can generate more from them, but we so we said we have put forward the names and the links of the interviews that were included in the publication. So especially in the first part of the publication on the content of the material, you can find the names and the last names and the links of the interviews of the people that have witnesses of those times. For instance, here we have Slavic saying, uh, 
and a couple of ladies basically that have been uh, with the witnesses of the situation before the war in Yugoslavia, but also they've seen the moment when the Nazi forces entered Zagreb and uh, they've been witnesses, of course, of the, all the other phases of that. So we consider that it's very important to include the uh, witnesses and their testimonies because their testimonies of those times because the youngsters today very hardly can hear those testimonies. Most of those people are not with us any longer. And even the ones that are still around us, they are very old. So I think it's very much to record their testimonies. Here you can also find various links and, and uh, contents of all the interviews that we have used in this publication. When it comes to the locations used, I would like to scroll through some of those. You will see that every single one of them has its own title, has its today's address, so that every single person can visit those locations physically in case they're interested to do so. For some of those, for instance, to the Zagreb synagogue that I'd like to talk in more details, it has its own original photography it does not exist any longer, so that's why we decided to put the photo of the synagogue so that people can see how it looks like. Then it has a description, a longer or briefer, based on the data that we found, than there is the current photo of the synagogue. For instance, the synagogue today in Zagreb has a plate where you can see the photo of the uh, original building and the description of the building. So. In the description, you can find the address of the original building, all the data we can find about it. We can uh, find a quote here. And uh, Zav Milo uh, talks about uh, the uh, building of the synagogue when he was a uh, school child back in those days and how it seemed to him, what was his perception. So there's uh, you know some details, what we could find. So that's it when it comes to the guidebook. Uh, you can check it yourself and you can hopefully find it interesting and find lots of interesting content. The other thing that I wanted to share with you today is a map. Basically, uh, it's a material that uh, we have uh, finalized after 27th of March. The idea is that in the map, every single person can go and, and, and visit the locations because our walks, as we said, are uh, already filled up and we don't have the capacities to bring uh, too many groups around. But uh, with the uh, guidebook and with those maps, you can do it yourselves. So there is the news on the walk that I was organized by 29th uh, and 29th of, of March, and soon it will get its own uh, page. And here is a link that uh, and it's very important that you have to click once and then once again when uh, the map opens the internet is a bit slow i like to apologize about that so and then you will get a map that we have uh you can see you can scroll and you can zoom in or you can click on a number where you will get information about the location and uh, you will get all the information about how we uh, lead the tour and how we imagine the entire thing of course, you can visit whatever you can. You can visit uh, the ones that you're interested at, of course. And um, you can find all the information that's relevant to these places when you scroll further down uh, based on these numbers. Here's number one. You can see the sh uh, short description in a photo. And when you scroll down, you can see the, the, the information that are in the guidebook. You can see also a photo of today's buildings that used to serve as prisons back in uh, World War II. So here you can find the address and also the description of the building. For instance, here we can see the building that is at the corner between uh, streets of Savska and Vukovarska, and uh, where a prison was established uh, since the end of the 19th century, which uh, the independent state of Croatia used uh, to, to uh, put their prisoners there. And then, of course, there are lots of data which you can read. And uh, the so-called Zagrebački Zbor or Zagreb Hold, you can 
Uh, you can read the address, which serves as a student center today. And uh, this is the only building actually that, that remains today over there. And again, you have a description that is related to that. Why is it important? What happened there? And so on and so forth. And uh, of course, further, the locations are put there as well. Uh, the map, as I said, is available on our web pages. Uh, the, the next walk on 10th of uh, April, we're going to put the map of the new locations. And then after that, we will also publish other maps of locations of the other walks. And we'll use, we'll ask you to use them. And because now during the pandemics, it is difficult to organize the walks, but I believe that maybe you can share this with your members of the family or friends and with maps and the guidebook, you can, you can visit yourselves. I'd like to end up here and uh, I'd like to uh, uh, call all the others after Christina finishes her part to uh, put forward any questions or comments that might you might have. Uh, thank you very much, Tena. And thank you, Alice Stranero, for uh, forming it in a visual sense. And I'd like to ask Christina Tilica right now to talk about the writers that participate in this publication. And to all of the you that are still following us, I'd like to thank you very much. And we have also the ambassador of the Republic of Ireland. And we have uh, students, professors, Dinka uh, Belushka, and so on and so forth. And uh, I hope that all of those information will uh, will be spread further uh, through those contacts and the people that have, are present right now. Christina, please go ahead. I cannot hear Christina. Ah, she's back. Hello, everyone. I'd like to thank Tena for this great introduction that she made. A, yes, it was very, very nice to make it as brief as she did. And I'll try to, of course, be as brief as well. I'd like to thank also Vesna and Documenta for inviting me to be part of this project and that they understood the importance of uh, correlation of uh, historical data and the art and history as such. And because, you know, we have all of the history data and we know that all of the events during the history that happened basically are a mosaic of events. And some of the people that make uh, this mosaic are the artists. Do we want to cultivate the culture of memory? We have the testimonies of the ones that have survived, but also we have the testimonies of the ones that have wrote, written about those things. Let's say through their acts, either artistic, uh, their paintings, so their sculptures, uh, or their literally works, they have been the witnesses of what happened. And uh, they wanted to, to, to bring forward their anti-war messages. What happened is very important. And uh, also many other, uh, many other writers and other, other pieces of work intentionally have been forgotten after the changes of, uh, of the systems. So what this kind of wants to do is bring from, the, from this uh, dark space, all of those people, so that we can bring to the youngsters, to the students, a, an image, an idea of what did this mosaic of the events uh, during World War II look like and present it back. So, Tena invited all of the uh, teachers, history teachers, but I'd like to I also invite all of the teachers of Croatian language in elementary and secondary schools. Um, this subject that is very much important for history and therefore Croatian language to work in this interdisciplinary subject. And uh, I believe I believe that you can have lots of other chances to, to create your own sessions of teachings by uh, cooperating, and we have cooperated uh, as a school with many different parties in creating those projects in other schools, for instance. And I believe that this guidebook is also a great opportunity to uh, further expand this cooperation. I'd like to talk about 
those uh, writers that were included in the publication, it was very hard to choose all of uh, the people that want, we wanted to include. Lots of their works are still looked at, and I hope that uh, we will mm, in include this not only with the writers, but also with the artists whose uh, works we'll need to look at and to bring from uh, from forget. And here we have Diana Budisavljevic, Ivan Docevic, Josip Horvat, Ilya Jakovljevic, Miroslav Karleža, Anšerka Martić, Vladimir Nazor, Vesna Farn, Viktor, uh, Rosenfeid and Ivan Shivan. Two names I'd like to mention especially. That's Viktor Rosenfeid and in Ina Jumbrod. They are writers of Jewish background whose uh, works, uh, thanks to the National Library, we managed to, to find. And because it was very hard to get them, it was very hard to get to them. And I hope that we're going to be able to discover other writers that have left their works. For instance, here we have also poets who spoke about their tragic events, tragic uh, cases. And in the guidebook, it's concept in such a way that we have a short biography and with the uh, special emphasis on their anti-fascistic struggle. And we have a part or a section, uh, a poem of certain authors. So we have concepted this, that all the teachers of Croatian language that are involved in this work and this cooperation have some sort of a work that uh, can be used uh, in the teaching as well, and that can stimulate the school children or the students to look further into the works of those authors further. And uh, they now presented one of the locations. Uh, but for me, for instance, it was very hard to choose one of the uh, writers that I would have chosen. And uh, basically, I just would like to end up this very brief presentation with a quote, uh, something that uh, was very very important to me, and uh, that's Angelica Martisevich, her novel, Pirgo, where she says that the war divides people from the ones that I love. And that is exactly uh, to this is exactly what we should do through this guidebook to prevent that it does not come again to any sort of evil like that, and that we can bring forward all of those messages of those writers and the artists that are not left in oblivion, but they are always brought forward. Thank you very much, Christina, for that. I'd like to send you once again the link of the publication and of the walk that Tena has described. And I'd like to use Mr. Alexander Hanegar uh, from the US Embassy that I supported the publication of the guidebook to take the floor. Thank you very much for that. Good morning. Uh, Vesna, I just want to make sure you can hear me. I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you, and I hope that you are able to hear the interpreting. Yes. Good morning to everyone. I, I would like to hear more from from Tana and Christina, actually. <laughs> but I want to just greet everyone. I look at those participants here. I see we have uh, ambassadors, uh, government officials, civil society, uh, many other distinguished people, and what are clearly the most important group, and that's the teachers. I'm a child of two teachers, and so I could not have more respect for what you do uh, and how important it is on this subject. And Vesna, I want to thank you in particular for organizing this. It's extraordinary and important. Now for the guidebook, I, I don't know if the word congratulations is the right word. Uh, thank you is better. Uh, I think uh, something like this is a labor of conscience and conviction. Uh, and, and it's an education for me as well. So thank you. On behalf of the US government, I just want to say a few words about why we support 
Holocaust education, why it's important to us. Uh, the US government believes very strongly that we have an obligation to honor Holocaust survivors, to, to guard the memory of the victims and all those other victims of Nazi and Ustasha persecution. And we have to fight back. We have to fight back against any form of, of discrimination, of anti-Semitism and attempts to revise history. Uh, the, the Holocaust illustrates what can happen when some of the worst human actions collide, prejudice, discrimination, anti-Semitism, raw hatred, uh, dehumanization of another group of people when all those things persist. Uh, and it's a product of both action and inaction. And unfortunately today, historical revisionism about the Holocaust and about World War II period in general is all too common. And I think that's another reason why we're here today. Uh, Holocaust education, it can stop these trends and it can ensure that the horrors are never repeated again. Now, some of you may wonder what uh, the US Embassy's role is. So why, why are we involved in this? Well, there are a lot of reasons for that, but I'll just state quickly what we do. We have a special envoy for Holocaust issues in Washington and our embassy here works with her, Sherry Daniels, at, on four key priorities. Uh, the first is returning properties and assets that were taken during the Holocaust back to the rightful owners or to the heirs. Uh, the second is securing compensation for Nazi era wrongs. The third is remembrance, ensuring the Holocaust is remembered and commemorated appropriately. And then last, why we're here today is supporting educational programs. And uh, here in Croatia, we work with Croatian government, we work with uh, Jewish groups, uh, we work with uh, survivors. We, we also work with our colleagues in the diplomatic community, uh, some of whom are participating today. And we at the embassy support groups that, that educate us. And we've done that for more than 20 years with programs that take teachers back to the United States to the American Holocaust Organization. And that has been in close cooperation with the Croatian government. Learning this history, this horrible history and, and listening to Holocaust survivors, it helps somebody like me uh, who didn't directly experience the Holocaust uh, to keep the truth of it alive. And we honor their memory um, by standing up against any form of discrimination. And that means we have to speak loud and clear to protect human dignity, respect, equity, and dialogue. Now, today's program, I think is a great example of that. I really do, I wanna hear more. I can't wait for the question and answer session. So I wanna hear more from the more important speakers. Uh, but I just wanna say that the beauty of it is that it gives context to the history. It makes it more real and it broadens our perspective. It teaches us. Right, it's practical education and it helps us visualize and make real what happened during World War II and it's not easy. A lot of people avoid that and I think talking about it here about Ustasha crimes and the war years in Croatia that's that's very difficult it's hard but the work of acknowledging it head on and wrestling with that it's key and it's key for uh, the Croatian democracy and in human terms it's key. And I think this guidebook is an extraordinary resource for that. And I hope uh, these programs serve as an inspiration for teachers uh, who have impacted me so much. My teachers when I was younger made sure I read books that educated me, went to the Holocaust Museum uh, and learned, even though my personal experience was, was more removed. And in closing, I would just like to note that this is something that's extremely important to my government not just as a body of, of the institution that represents our citizens, but from the leadership as well. Uh, many of you know President Biden from the very beginning, he's made clear statements, our Secretary of State, his stepfather was a Holocaust survivor. His first day in the office, he made clear statements about this and spoke to his personal experience. And President Biden's comments on uh, International Holocaust Remembrance Day, I think are worth uh, closing with today, if I may just quote him. He spoke in the statement about his own education, how he learned and then how he taught his children. And then he said this, we must pass the history of the Holocaust on to our grandchildren and their grandchildren in order to keep the real promise of never again. That's how we present or prevent future genocides. Remembering the victims, the heroes and lessons of the Holocaust is particularly important today as Holocaust deniers and minimizers are growing louder in our public discourse. But the facts are not up for question. 
and each of us must remain vigilant and speak out against the resurgent tide of anti-Semitism and other forms of bigotry and intolerance here at home and around the world. I'd like to thank you, Tana and Christina for doing that for us today. Thank you. Puno hvala. Puno hvala na podrsi i... Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your support and encouragement at a time when uh, the direct witnesses of World War II are, are leaving us. So it's very important in all of the countries all around the world to learn about what happened, to share this information. And by saying this, I'd like to open the discussion. And I'd like to use the chance to thank everyone for being here with us. We have the professor from various parts of the world and from Croatia. We have the uh, representatives of the embassies of Israel, Austria, Poland, uh, Ireland, and so on and so forth. We have uh, also Matusz Krabala, uh, who leads the center uh, for memory and Holocaust. And I believe that this guidebook is going to be uh, used in many uh, creative ways. And therefore, I'd like to uh, ask you for questions, for comments. And we have also uh, suggestions from panelists to add more locations. So please do not refrain. Feel free and relax to choose whatever you think it's important to include, because we're going to prepare the other edition of the guidebook, and I think it's very important to include uh, other locations, and that's the path that we certainly want to take. Let me check the questions. Can't see much. But perhaps we can invite our participants that are following this discussion, our attendees, and uh, perhaps Alice can promote that in these and the panelists, and uh, they might uh, speak their thoughts. In the meantime, if you hear any noises, I'd like to apologize. That's my neighbor drilling something. In the beginning, uh, we have lots of comments from Nena Jovanovic. Would you like to share uh, those suggestions with the others? So let me read his uh, comments. So Mr. Jovanovic was saying, he says, I suppose that the question will be filled with new chapters. And uh, there is a question, what is the plan to uh, reconstruct the synagogue in the Prashka street? Well, I can perhaps answer to this. Due to the dispute that exists between uh, Jewish communities, and I think that there's no much progress there. And I'd like to ask Tena if she has any additional information on that. Not really. I think that's the last thing that we know. South uh, uh, has been confirmed after um, the last walk that we've had. And I think there have been various ideas, various plans and, and drafts and so on and so forth. But due to the uh, contradictions between the two uh, Jewish communities in Zagreb, there hasn't been much done there. If you have no questions for the authors, but you have lots of uh, greetings and congratulations, I can see in the chat. I, today is the day that marks the beginning of the attack of uh, Nazi uh, Germany and uh, Fascist Italy against uh, Yugoslavia, a date that uh, marks the start of World War II in those areas. And uh, the, since the 1st of September 1939, various news would come to Yugoslavia and uh, people heard about the uh, treatment of Jews in various parts of Europe and how they were sent to the camps and how they were uh, how their 
dignity and rights were, were violated in so many other forms than we know on what happened with the uh, fascistic, uh, with the Italian fascists in, uh, in Pula and how they burned the so-called people's home, which are people's assembly. And uh, I couldn't find a lot to, to get some sort of a summary of how the entire World War II first phase kind of started. Can we jointly kind of create this idea? What did I miss? Well, I don't know. What I can say is that what I've seen this morning, and uh, there were some brief uh, information with some map, and there was uh, some TV program that mentioned the date. Well, I'd like to add to this, and I haven't, mm, from the media that I followed, I haven't found much information on this. Well, to be honest, I haven't followed the international media, I haven't managed to do that, but I'm going to look into that further during the day and see if there's going to be an additional information on this. Yes, it's understood that during the pandemics, we have other things to worry about. Now I see that Dinka Chorkalo Peluski says, and I don't know if today's day is marked. Uh, the uh, portals, news portals, haven't really brought any sort of uh, breaking news or important news on what happened on those days. Sasha Petean. Hello. Hello, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you for this great work that you have done. I have to say that I am touched because you have really started and initiated and started everyone that wanted to participate in this memorizing. And you have also initiated, I uh, created some hope for democracy. And what we are creating together. I'd like to thank you all I can see that it's very important to movement. And, and uh, well, I am here in, in Slovenia and I can see, say that in today's media, in Slovenia, there is no news about this at all. So I have to say that there are, have information that more or less, how shall I say it, the NGOs are the ones that work on remembering this day. So there are lots of Zoom events and I have to, to connect there as well. So I wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Sasha, for being with us and that you can recognize this hope that you're encouraging us to do so. We have uh, the suggestions from Karlo Tashaic. We can also perhaps read the suggestions that were given by Nenad Ivanovic to include in the other part of the guidebook uh, from uh, the Serbian bank, uh, the Serbian association Privrednik that have been forbidden in 1941 and their real estate in Prvozhenska Jurišćeva and uh, they have been confiscated and there's still a struggle to bring them back. From Karlo Dršajic, I would suggest that for the other publication, you will use the archive of the revolutionary workers movement that is at Croatian National or State Archive. And uh, some of the data there uh, give some uh, other idea on how Zagreb during the occupation looked like. Thank you very much for that. There we go. We have another question from Josip Jakic. And she's asking what has been the greatest suggestions. Um, perhaps uh, Christina can do that. There we go, Tene. Maybe can you want to do that? I want to connect to this. The biggest uh, challenge is the access to information. Some of the things are good. Because, for instance, when 
comes to the Jews and their persecution, there exists more information in comparison to Serbs or the Romas. And in Zagreb, there's very few information, basically, and I think that that is clear from the guidebook here as well. So the archive part haven't been comprised fully with the first research. It depends on the literature available and also on the data that are, are available. I hope that we are going to be able to look into more details and to the second part as well. To me, it was very important, although I am very, very much interested in this part. And uh, I hope that we are going to be able to work in the next uh, publication as well. And I think that this is the biggest challenge because some of the things haven't been uh, researched at all. And I hope that it's going to be changed in the future for the benefit of researchers and students and all of the others that are interested for this matter. I also like to uh, relate to this matter. And my research is also related to the literature and art. And during the times when I was still studying, some of the facts about some of the writers have been, let's say, hidden, and some of the writers haven't been mentioned at all. And that's something that has been the biggest uh, challenge for me. Who wrote at this time and who were the ones that spread their anti-war messages at this time? Because those are the messages that have to be spread with all of the historical events. And then we have to also deal with the other uh, writers and uh, connect them to the entire anti-fascistic movement and their uh, area of uh, their creativity. And uh, of course, some of their works are on the list of uh, obligatory literature, but this part of their life somehow is being neglected and ignored. And that's something that we want to struggle against. And that was the hardest thing to do. I think that is uh, that's something that we don't work on. I'd like to thank you very much for the question. I'd like to also uh, congratulate the anti fascist network that in their online. Uh, publications, they bring lots of uh, resources and the data. And I think that uh, the continuity of this research is a joint challenge. And Dinka uh, said that the guidebook would be sent to the Ministry of Education, especially the advisors on history. But that would be a good source to learn about World War II. And, uh, I think that is a great idea as a source to learn about history, thanks to Document and all the others that have done a lot for this. Uh, thank you, Dinka, for this uh, for those words. Therefore, I'd like to give the floor now to Tena, because the guidebook itself has to be worked in details in cooperation with teachers. Other steps need to be taken in order for the content to be adopted further. And there's more work to be done. What do you say, Tena, to this? Yes. Our first idea was to, to write this, to do, when it comes to those guidebooks, uh, especially when it comes to the high schools. But I think that this can be an initial uh, initial step and the dealing also with the local history, which is very important as well. And I think that those links that we believe that are important and should be used, I think that they have to be used more than they are used. And uh, I mean on various similar materials that exist here in our country. And uh, what is the other plan based on the materials that we have? 
a part that we are going to work the guidelines. Uh, we are going to do uh, also the cooperation with the other teachers, and we're going to work on some sort of a cycle of works that we can use further in uh, teachings. And we're going to send it to the ministries and to the agencies for the education for the recommendation to be used in the schools as well. But that's something that it's ahead of us. And the uh, preparation itself at the agency for publication, it's a bit more expanded and it should include more elements. And uh, right now, Tena prepares a content. And now we know what is uh, important and in cooperation with the other uh, teachers we can do. That's a plan. We have to do a small working group from history and uh, work on the materials. The plan is to set some sort of a workshops and develop some of the things, but I think that this is a longer process, And uh, but it's in our plan. All right, that's the plan. And uh, it will include the teachers and the other team subjects, because I believe that the artistic approach that sometimes somewhere transforms and brings people closer to World War II is very important. And uh, that is a good, good way forward. Do we have perhaps some sort of a question or a comment so far? For the time being, we don't have in a chat or q and I'd like to remind all of you that are following us that we have a link there, which you can find all the data that are important. And I think that uh, it's important in case you want to add something further. Thank you very much, Diana. In case we don't have any further questions, I'd like to ask Dana, Christina, and Alice, the others, to tell us maybe a few more words. And perhaps to tell us something more. Maybe we can also hear Alice. She didn't have a chance to say much today. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'd like to say the same. I'm, I was very glad to be part of this guidebook. And I worked uh, mostly on graphic design, although I have, uh, haven't had much experience of this, but at the end, it seems that uh, we found a good way, a, a way that is easy to read and we can consult on. And uh, I don't have anything to add here, so. And uh, we can perhaps get somehow further contribute to this this works. Thank you very much, Alicia. And I think it's it's very easy to follow this work. Well, I'd like to thank once again to, to Documenta and to say that I'm very proud of all of this this project. We cannot stop. Somebody said we cannot stop this. We'd like to thank also the American Embassy, and like to thank the Israeli Embassy and all the others that have supported us in our project. So to at least somehow feel protected, supported in what we do. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Christina. I like to because Alice just said this because I haven't mentioned and Alice was the main photographer here in a couple of days we managed to, to visit all of the locations of Zagreb and we tried to, to take a photo of everything that we could 
So basically, Alice contributes a lot in the graphical sense to have all of our own photos in the guidebook as well. And that was great. And then the, I'd like to thank all of you that have been here today with us. I have to say that I'm very satisfied with uh, what we've done so far. And I believe that the, the guidebook is good. And I hope that you will use it and that you're going to send the information back to us. I'd like to call the people that haven't been registered or the ones that want to do it again to do it for the next walk uh, to join us and uh, to call the ones that are interested. And uh, we count on 25 people how much they are allowed in during the pandemics and see if something will change. I'd like to call you to use this guidebook to see the maps that we're going to publish and perhaps to visit some of the locations and uh, to let us know about everything. Thank you very much for coming once again. Well, thank you all once again. And if you want to join in one of the walks and to you uh, want uh, our help in that, perhaps we're going to be able to, to help you somehow. We perhaps can find some sort of a new uh, a new dates. The dates that have been, are the groups that are full are 10th of uh, April and uh, in May, and the next one is 19th of June. I hope that you will be able to join us and see you in one of those walks, because it's a great way to learn and also to bring forward new suggestions. And uh, I wish you all a very nice rest of the day and uh, like to thank you once again for joining us today. I see that no one wants to leave. The recording of uh, this session will be published during the day and then you can look at it if you're interested, perhaps today or some other day. And the recording will be in English and Croatian as well. Thank you all. Thank you. Goodbye. Hvala vam. Na svidanje. Na svidanje, Saša.